I'm Mackie, and this is my wife, Sid. We're professional mountain bikers on a quest to race the best and most challenging mountain bike races around the world. Today, we're heading to Farmington, New Mexico for the 44th annual Road Apple Rally. We're just two weeks post our first ever 100 miler, the Margie Gessick, and are still feeling the effects of being on the bike for 11 and 13 hours respectively. So Sid has opted to ride with my dad, Bob, instead of racing. In case you're new to our channel, my dad, Bob, is 79 years old, and this has been his biggest race season in a while. And for the first time that any of us can remember, he's not the oldest racer at the race. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you've probably noticed that we have moved towards sort of lighter and lighter and faster rolling tires. Sometimes those tires flat. And a lot of people said, well, you know, why don't you run a heavier casing or a heavier tire to decrease the likelihood of flatting? Here's what I figured out. I have done a lot of races, literally hundreds of races. If you want to be at the front of the race, you probably are gonna have to ride very light, very fast rolling tires. I would rather risk flatting, but also have the possibility of being on the podium, potentially winning, over running a heavier tire that would significantly decrease my likelihood of ending up on the podium or winning, but also reduce the risk of flats. That's not the right decision for everybody, but for me and where I am in terms of my fitness and my racing, etc., that's the right decision. That brings me to this weekend, where I will be racing the Road Apple Rally. This is the longest running mountain bike race in the US. It's been going on for 40 something years, which is wild. I've raced it before. I have had decent races sometimes. I didn't race it last year because I had broken a rib at Madeira, but this year I'm feeling pretty fit. I'm pretty excited. I would like to see if I can finally have a really good race at Road Apple. So bringing you back to the tire discussion, I will be running the Aspen STs in the 170 TPI. These are the like race only tires. They are very light. The casing is very nice and supple, feels awesome to ride, but you do increase your likelihood of puncturing. There's a couple of reasons. One, Road Apple doesn't really have any rocks. It's very fast and rolling. I want to say two years ago, the average speed was like 17 miles an hour or something. So you're going really fast. And a lot of that is rolling resistance or lack thereof. So as you can see, these tires are very low profile, very much semi slicks. Usually I choose the 120 TPI because it's a little bit stronger, but this time I'm going 170 front and rear. So yeah, that's the plan. I'm excited, should be fun, but I need to put some tires on. I have decided that I am not going to race this weekend. Not for any big reason, I just have found over the years of racing that I do better mentally when I have definitive on and off periods and Margie Gessick just felt like a bit of a punctuation mark on the season, exclamation mark, I guess. If I race Road Apple, it will just be a two hour just VO2 max software fest. Right now, if I'm taking two weeks off, it's going to be unpleasant and possibly frustrating and just not really the end that I want for my season. I feel like I already had that. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna support Mackie, and also I'm gonna ride with Mackie's dad, Bob, because he is doing the 15 mile race. I rode with him in 2021 when I was recovering from my injury, and that was his first race in years at age 75. He's had a series of setbacks with health and a broken hand over the past couple years, but this year he has really come roaring back, has done pretty much a full semester Mexico off-road series. Road Apple is really awesome community event. They bring a lot of people together, get a lot of people out. It's a lot of people's first mountain bike race. It's super accessible and fun and just really good vibes. They're officially back on RBS, which is showing up at 9 p.m. to pitch a tent in a parking lot. 
Feels like the good old times. Here's Mackie moving the trash can out of the way. The trash can is chained into the <laughs> ground. <laughs> Wait, is it really? Yeah. They are on to you. <laughs> Good morning from Farmington. I'm at the phase of the pre-race morning where I'm feeling very good about my decision not to race. About two seconds before the start, I'll be like, oh, should have done it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's I think it's the right choice, and I'm pretty excited to ride with Bob. Been a while since we rode together, Bob. I think it might have been the last one. I'm hoping, though, I should be in better shape than I was that one. But I'm also three years older. But it'll be fun having you with me. Christopher Robin says, and the bear says it's more fun with two. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Do you want to explain your choice to go to flat pedals for anyone else in the oh, yeah. 70? I've realized now club. most of my crashes are not being able to get my foot out of mm -hmm. the pedal. I actually fractured a metacarpal. Yeah. And then a lot of other times, and I finally said, I guess for me, flat pedals is just easier and I'll lose the pole. I think you'll be fine. But uh, I'd rather you know, race another day and be a little bit slower. Now, I also got a little mirror. It's mm -hmm. so another thing that happens as you get a bit older. You can't always hear the people coming up yeah. behind you. And this way you get a little idea that they're there. Not yeah. that many people pass me or anything like go. that. <laughs> Bike accessories from by Bob. <laughs> you are only allowed to have one of these if you're over the age of 75. <laughs> yeah, you need your number plate, Bob. You got it. You got yours before me, right? I was 23. I, I noted because I was like, it's my age. I took it out of the motel room. <laughs> Sid made me some brekkie overnight oats. Definitely the uh, way to go. This is the best. 7.30. There's a riders meeting at 8 o'clock. And then the 30 milers go off at 8.45. Get some brekkie down. Probably kit up and try to get a decent, like, 30-ish minute warm-up I think would be plenty. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I, I like this race, but also we'll have to see how I feel two weeks after Margie. At 29 miles long with 1,700 feet of climbing, the Road Apple Rally course is flatter than many of the races we've done this year. It's also one of the fastest, with average speeds for the pro men in the 17 mile per hour range. Combine that with the fact that it draws a pretty fast group of racers and you have a deceptively difficult race, where tactics come into play more than any other race we've done this year. Let's make some noise, this is the 43rd Road Apple Rally, you ready? Let's send you off in 5, 4, 3, 2, one, go! We are off and running. Final start, go expert distance. If you're new to this channel, you might not recognize Mackie's dad, Bob. A few years ago, after a decade-long hiatus, he got back on a bike. He started off on one of our e-bikes, then an acoustic bike, and then started racing again. Unfortunately, due to some health issues, he wasn't able to race as much as he hoped the last two years, but this year, he's had a big season, racing four races so far at the age of 79. You all tell your parents to come on out here and have some fun with us. And just like Mackie, he's capping off his season with the Road Apple Rally. How you feeling, Bob? Oh, pretty good. Oh, there you are. Do <laughs> you want me to go first? Yeah, if you. <laughs> okay.
Bob's doing awesome. Super strong start. Hopefully not too strong. I wanted me to lead that first piece of single track. And he was right, right there. I'm like, don't let me go too fast. But it wasn't, so here he's making moves. Can you see me in your mirror, Bob? See? <laughs> Snuck up on you. This 10 mile section of the road apple course is surprisingly tricky. Despite only a 400 foot difference between the low and high points, you end up climbing close to 700 feet, which likely doesn't even take into account the hundreds of whoops that make up this part of the course. The nice part about the whoops is that you can pump them and use your upper body to make speed, but the downside is that you often question whether you should be pedaling or pumping, and regardless of which one you choose, you feel like you chose wrong. more difficult steepy punchy bits Bob's doing awesome the sand doesn't make it easier oh he's going for it oh man okay. I thought that might happen. Just came around the corner. <laughs> it was really deep sand. And I yelled sand. It was too late. That sand to swallow you whole there. <laughs> you got this. Bob's got a pretty good battle going with Arthur, who's the only person in the race who's older than him at 81, so I'm just trying to stay out of the way, set a good line for both of them so everybody stays on the bike. Might have gone a little too fast there, lost him. Come on, Bob! Unfortunately, right before this clip, the guy ahead of me crashed in a sand pit, and since we were about to go through a gate, there was no way for me to get around him, and we lost contact with the top three in our group. This is always a tough position to be in, because it means you have to work extra hard to try to catch back up, while the racers ahead of you can either attack to try to lengthen the gap, or take it a bit easier and reserve some energy for later in the race.
Unfortunately. guys have gassed me out a little bit. Thank you. Yeah. I would really like to connect back on because there's a paved section coming up and it really sucks when you're by yourself. Oh, it's going to be hard to catch them. Come on, Mackie, come on. Come on, Maggie, you can see him. Let's go, let's go. Come on, Maggie, you can still catch him. You can still catch him. Let's go, let's go. Oh. Nice job, man. Well done. I'm gonna have to go another lap. <laughs> <laughs> right, I screwed it out of the course because I want to catch Bob's finish. He's neck and neck with Arthur. Yeah, Bob! Apple Rally. That race is always so hard. There's no sustained descending. You're just going so hard the whole time. Because the trails are like rolling, you get to go really fast. I think the average speed was over 16 miles an hour, like 16 and a half miles an hour. And just to be able to do that for 30 miles is pretty fun. I had a pretty good day. I had one moment where the guy in front of me sort of crashed in a sandy corner and we both had to stop and then we lost the group. I think I burned a couple matches trying to catch back up. I just couldn't quite reconnect and so it was. I just dangled off the back like, oh, so close. So it was successful, I'm happy with it. I would still love to like be up at the front there. <laughs> it just hasn't happened. First road apple for uh, a couple of years, right? You didn't race it last yeah, year. Yeah, it was 21, so 21. three years. How'd it go? It went well, thanks to Sid mainly. Sid was riding in front of me and I could see how quick to take the corner and uh, see when she'd disappear into an arroyo. At times I can't always see that far in the distance, so it <laughs> made a lot, a lot of difference. I uh, hear that you beat your time from three years ago. I did, apparently I went uh, three minutes faster. Well, I mean, it's pretty good if between 77 and 80, you got in better shape. Oh yeah, man, you can always get better shape. <laughs> you just gotta, you just gotta work out more. <laughs> Age doesn't mean anything. I hear you also had a, a, a battle with one of your fellow 70-plusers. This is the first race that I think I've ever been in. There was somebody older than me. He's 81, so he's a year and a half older, and he's from Chattanooga. So we kind of battled it out. And at the end, one was before and then the other one, back and forth. And I finally looked at him and said, Arthur, you want to go over together? And he says, yeah, let's do it. So but man, really he's quite a racer, particularly downhill. He's just flying, that guy. <laughs> I had two goals this season. One was to not come in last in a race. And I think I've not come in last now a number of times. All right, well done. <laughs> My other goal is to ride the Rift Valley Loop, which is in Taos, in under an hour. 
And you know what an asymptote is? See, an asymptote is a line that approaches the other one but never quite meets it. I think I'm on it because I just get closer and closer <laughs> and I can't beat the hour. I'm going to be working out through the winter on the trainer oh, and stuff. I'm, okay. I'm going to start doing my intervals. Oh, yeah, next year I'll really smash it. Everybody look out. Bob Franklin, 2025. <laughs> it was good overall. I set a second highest ever 90 minute heart rate that tracks with sort of what I felt, which was that you have to go hard kind of the whole race. It's very rolling and so there's never really recovery. Overall, I'm really happy. I was 21 seconds from first. I was five seconds from fourth. Like I could see them on the road and I just couldn't quite close it. And that's what happens at Road Apple. It's very tactical where like if you get gapped, it's really hard to close that gap. I made some tactical mistakes, had some, you know, luck that didn't play out and that's that's racing thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss next week's video and in the meantime don't forget to be more awesome